It is spring and it is time for a deep cleaning of my kitchen shelves. Thanks, Lorenzo. When we bought this house, this kitchen was completely saturated with oak. It was oak upper cabinets here, just oak, oak, oak. It's terrible. It's a very small kitchen and the color and the wood grain, it was so overpowering. It just suffocated this entire space. So we got the keys to the house and the first thing to go was the upper cabinets. Having open shelves in my kitchen has been everything I dreamed it would be. And to answer the question I know I'm going to get a million times in this episode is what about the dust? Typically what I do is once every couple months, I take everything off of the shelves, just like I did here, and I wipe everything down. So let's get started. But before we do that, I've got to tell you the most important tip that I'm going to tell you whenever you're doing a deep cleaning, music. Almost every single item on my kitchen shelves is functional and I use it daily or weekly to make sure that it gets washed regularly and the dust stays off of it. But these babies here behind me are so beautiful and I didn't have anywhere else to display them in my home. So I keep them nice and safe on my kitchen shelves. Someday when I remodel my bathroom, my dream is to have my bath salts in them. Don't forget to layer things. Something that works really good for kitchen shelves are cutting boards. Anytime I'm at a thrift store and I see a cutting board that looks really cool or it's an exotic wood, I always snag those. I scored this fabulous mid-century pitcher and glass set at an estate sale a couple years ago for $25. And then I got this at Goodwill for 99 cents and it just happened to fit the cups perfectly. I had found several other caddies before, but these cups are pretty narrow and I hadn't found something that would kind of hold them nice and sturdy. This set is so fun when I'm entertaining. I can cut some cucumbers, some fresh mint, throw it in with some ice water there, put lemonade in it, and then you can carry this outside. This is one of my favorite pieces. We use this almost daily. Anytime we do some scrambled eggs on the weekend, pancake batter, anything that you need to whisk up and whip up and pour, this baby is perfect. I scored this at Goodwill for only $2.99. My fabric pottery is one of the very few things that I actually collect. And if you ever see this little baby lowercase f on the bottom of pottery, it is fabric, F-A-B-R-I-K. It's from the 1970s and it's a Washington company. This particular color is called Agate Pass and that's the one that I personally collect. If you ever come across these in this pattern, hit me up, let me know. I'm one of those weirdos that likes to have a different type of bowl or size of bowl for everything that I eat. These are my cereal bowls and they are probably one of the only pieces in my entire home that I would cry if they broke. Then these are my pasta bowls because you know, you need a little bit bigger for pasta, come on. I think it's important to layer things in the background. So that way it's not just the wall behind, which ugh, my texture is so gross. But I like to layer things with decorative plates and I usually switch these out. And here's a pro tip, you guys, you ready for this? If you have a plate and you just lean it up against the wall, it might slide, especially if you have cats that walk across. These are to put on like cutting boards and things that need a little feet attached to the bottom. But I just attach it right there and then, look, whoa, oops. That was a bad example of how to be careful and not break your pottery. Anyways, yeah, pro tip right there. This is an example about how a lot of my pottery does not match. It's not the same brand, but it does have similar color tones to it and texture. A lot of my pieces have this speckled 70s look. I used to have two of these, but one of them broke. I was so sad. This is an estate sale score and I got it for a dollar. And then these actually don't match, but they look very similar. And these I use for like yogurt and granola, little dessert dishes. And then this is my favorite salad bowl. 
One of the only not thrifted and contemporary pieces we have are these plates from our wedding. They were from Crate and Barrel, and I like the little square shape. It kind of keeps everything in there if you've got something with a sauce. And then these were from Ikea, and I believe that these were only a dollar or two each at Ikea. But I really like, instead of just stacking the plates on here, having something to hold them. It just looks a little bit nicer on the open shelves. I am constantly switching around all of my glass jars. It just depends on what I have that's fresh. I love this little guy. Look how cute he is. Leftovers. Love it. This is one of my favorite pieces in the kitchen. I love this big guy. I don't typically use him when I'm just making soup for my husband and myself, but whenever I have guests over and I'm making a soup in the fall, I break that baby out. This is a personal favorite of mine. Look at that beautiful wood inlay detail work. So fabulous. Honestly, uh, that cutting board to me is like a piece of art. I don't know if you guys remember when I found this when we went out for Halloween. This was a really big splurge. I don't remember what I ended up paying, but I think it was like 40 or $50, which was really steep for me, but it's such a big, heavy duty piece. And I do make homemade pesto and it's fantastic for that. Who remembers me finding this little guy? This was from the Great Junk Hunt last fall and I scored this for $5. And what I love about it is it has that same kind of look that my Catherine Holm piece has. All right, we're gonna go up here, climb on the... Whoa. All right, I have now climbed up here to the top shelves so I can show you some of these pieces, but this was a gift from my aunt and it was my great grandparents and it's very beautiful old blue willow china. When I got married, I collected a bunch of different patterns of blue and white pottery. I had a whole bunch of vases. I'll insert a picture so you guys can kind of see what I did there. But this is a really special piece and I kind of keep this one tucked away from the edge because let's put it over there in fact. Gotta make sure the cat doesn't get anywhere near that one. One of my pro tips when you're stacking things like these handmade pottery bowls is, let's check this out. Put a piece of cork under there. It's nice and soft, it keeps it safe and it raises it up so that you can actually see that there's three of them rather than them all being stacked down together. When you have an area in your kitchen that doesn't get any sunlight, that's when the faux plants come in. You guys have probably heard me talk about my love for hand-painted Mexican pottery. I just adore it. I love the patterns and the color tones and the fact that it has such rustic finish on it. I have used these type of pots before as planters and they make really beautiful planters having the greenery overflowing in it. This is my fabulous soup pot. Oh my gosh, I love this thing so much. I even have a handmade ladle in there. Found that separately. I got this at a garage sale for $5. It is a vintage cast iron cactus cornbread pan, but I think I'm gonna use it for some cupcakes. Whenever I'm at thrift stores, I'm always looking for cute little single plates that I can use for my little avocado toast. And I don't know what it is, but just having a fun hand painted plate makes getting things ready to eat a little bit more fun. Someone's trying to show off for the camera. Lorenzo, <laughs> what are you doing in there, buddy? This is my one and only Catherine home piece. And I just got this at a local store about two months ago, just before things started closing down. These retail online for over $200 a piece. And I've been looking for this exact blue pattern. I ended up getting this for $50, which wasn't a thrift store price, but it was something that I'd been on the hunt for forever. And I decided I just couldn't walk away from it. I tend to be drawn towards mostly 1970s and late 1960s pottery. And how I kind of try to tie all this together is having a common theme. So for me, it's blue and speckles. Everybody's got their own personal preference. When you have a common theme, it kind of makes pieces that don't necessarily match together kind of blend and have that mix and match look. This is one of my favorite pieces. It's by a local Pacific Northwest artist, B. Welsh. And I've never come across another one of their pieces, but I'm hoping someday that I do. This giant canister was a goodwill find and I was looking on the Halloween section and somebody had set this up on the table and I think I only paid $3.99 for this. These are some of my favorite Mexican pottery hand painted mugs. I actually got these at a thrift store for a dollar and some reason I decided to leave behind the others and the next day I was like, why did I do that? And I went back to go get them and they were gone. So I only have three. And I could have had six. I don't know what I was thinking. This plate was a wedding gift for us and our friend had our initials and our wedding day inscribed on the back. So that's a really special one. And this is another thing that I do is I put these in the very back 
for layering. Something a little more unconventional on a kitchen shelf would be either putting artwork or woven baskets. I like to try to think a little bit outside the box and add texture by doing something a little unexpected. I scored this giant basket at the Portland flea market a couple years ago. And then this one down here was a Goodwill find. I got that one for 99 cents. The fur shelves are reclaimed. We got them at a salvage yard in Portland and the brackets we ordered off of Etsy. They were only $15 a piece. We completely transformed this entire kitchen on a very tight budget of $1,500. We're now getting started on the other half of the kitchen. So don't forget to check out my new YouTube channel so that you can see the complete transformation where I'm gonna go over each step of the process, including a DIY of how I painted the oak cabinets myself. Thank you so much for watching today. Hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.